guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. Uh, welcome to the show. We're here for NASA's Green Run Hot Fire Test on this Thursday afternoon, March 18th, 2021. It's about, where are we? Four o'clock Eastern Standard, Eastern Daylight Time now. Just had the clock switch here on us, but... Uh, this is uh, the test today, which is down here. We're going to take a look at this here in a little while, but uh, this is in Central Time, uh, but I'm in Eastern Time, so that's what I'm telling you, Eastern Time. But anyways, we are about... We don't really know. These things are tough to judge and tough to tell. We're about 30 minutes away from the hot fire test. We're kind of guessing right now. By we, I mean me. And, and maybe some of you guys that are in our Discord and our Patreon members that are hanging out with us and chatting it up a little bit. Everybody's trying to guess, trying to figure out when the hot fire test is. So we don't know if this is accurate or not, but we'll find out uh, in a little while here. NASA does have their feed up, which will kind of switch back and forth between uh, throughout here because sometimes they show us the test stand and the rocket and sometimes they show us promos about how good the orange rocket is. And uh, sometimes we'll switch away from those. But, but anyways, we're gonna hopefully see a test fire today. It's not an actual rocket launch, but this is a test fire of the SLS rocket, just the core stage, really. There are solid rocket boosters. There is a second stage. This is the core stage, the main beast stage of the SLS rocket. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna fire its four RS-25 engines that are at the bottom of it. We did this once before back in January. I don't remember the exact date, but back in January, they did this once already but the test cut off after the engines fired for about 67 seconds. They need to go for, well, the test is 485 seconds. So that's basically an eight minute test. And that's, that's the full duration of the test. They have to go for about four minutes in order to consider this all, all good and they can move on to their actual targeted launch, which is targeted for November, 2021. So only a couple months away. So they need about four... I just keep getting this same song that keeps repeating in my headphones. It's distracting. Can we get a different song? There we go. Okay. No, now we have no song. Well, we need some music. Here we go. Okay, we'll see if that works. Anyway, so what were we saying? This is, uh, I got distracted by the music. Uh, but they did this once already. It only went for 67 seconds. We had a problem with uh, one of the core stage auxiliary power units, the CAPUs. Uh, there was a conservative limit set on that, and uh, that shut down the test early after only 67 seconds. Not enough data collected to move on to the launch and stacking of the full vehicle, but hopefully we will be uh, we're be better shaped today. So it only has to make it four minutes to be considered good enough. Eight minutes would be great, but four minutes is pretty much good enough. Most of the stuff happens at the beginning of the test, which we'll talk about in just a minute anyway. So as you can see, we've got an estimated time, but if I get myself out of the way here and all my stuff, you can see we're standing by for hot fire test time. We don't know the exact time, Estimated to be a little less than 30 minutes from now, which would be 3:30 uh, p.m. Central Daylight Time. So that's what we think they're targeting, but we don't know that for sure. Uh, the window does is open until about 5 p.m. Eastern Time. That would be 4 p.m. Central Time. So they have about an hour left in the test window, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, we'll see if we can get it in here. For today but we're standing by looking for waiting for it waiting for some uh an update on the time so anyways let's see what you guys are up to there's my long long winded intro let's see what's what's happening with you guys you sound off in the chat and let me know where you're watching from no uh -oh, we just lost i lost my windows i need to turn off that action there we go uh let's see nico neko nico Welcome, welcome to the astronaut membership. Thanks, Nigo, for becoming a member. Really appreciate your support there. Caesar Anidez, one of our regulars. Thanks, Caesar, for the super chat. Really appreciate it. And, and Neko, Neko, not only, not only with a membership but a super chat as well. Really appreciate that. Thanks very much. Oh, I probably should turn the sound off on my, on my phone. That's going to be distracting. I didn't want to miss any updates, so I had the sound on while I was setting up the stream. 
I'll turn that back off. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see what's uh, what's going on in the chat. I'm gonna scroll way back to see what we missed. I saw a bunch of people t chatting it up towards the beginning, telling us where we were watching from. I can see a little bit of the water suppression system going there. Uh, that that kicks up when we get closer to the actual launch. Or not launch. I, I'm going to say launch a million times. The closer to the actual test itself. But for some... I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why they have the water suppression system on the whole time. Like, it just runs and runs and runs and runs. I don't know the answer to that. All right, let's uh, let me get to the comments here and we'll see where everybody is from. Got a couple people that don't like SLS. Tyler thinks SLS is a scam. <laughs> We're so close. November is the targeted time for launch, so hopefully it's not going to turn out to be a scam. I was sure this is uh, from Anti Angel. Anti Angel Raphael, I was sure the SpaceX SN11 already would be up in the air before this event. Yeah, SN11, and we don't know what's going on with SN11. Maybe this weekend, there are TFRs up for this weekend, but I think we still need a static fire at this point. So we're not entirely, not entirely sure yet. You guys don't hear my background music? Maybe I gotta turn it up a little bit more. I need to fix the sub mix so it's not too loud in my ears. How about zero minutes and let's just cancel the whole thing? Tyler is not an SLS fan, to say the least. <laughs> uh, let's see. We've got a super chat here from An from Andy Arvai. What do you what do you like the mission control of today with to Oh, I see. What do you like? The mission control of today with today's computers or the consoles from the Apollo era? That's a good question. Um I I don't know. Obviously like modern day modern modern day missions I would want them to use modern day consoles and computers, but there is something uh there is something about that that vintage feeling and vintage look. I mean, it's really just impressive more than anything else, the fact that we were able to launch rockets with those those older consoles in the first place. That's just crazy to me. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how how that's even possible, but I would love to I would love to go see the old consoles which I've seen like uh at uh, the Kennedy Space Center in NASA, they have some of the uh like a whole control room, mock control room set up from back in the Apollo days with all the original consoles. Uh, they do have that. Uh, it's kind of cool to see, but you can't really touch it. It's uh, as you go into the uh, the Saturn V center there, but it is cool to see. Oh, there we go. I, they just flashed it on the screen real quick. Test at 3.30. Oh, no, then they took it off the screen. <laughs> Maybe that was an oops. They flashed it on the screen real quick. Test at 3.30. And then they took it off and it says standing standing by for test time. Well, so maybe it's at 3.30. This would be central time, which is still in... That's what my T-minus countdown clock is counting to, so. If anybody hears more, because I don't really have the sound from NASA up at the moment while we're getting the comments. I'll get, I'll get it up in just a minute. Let's see. Katja. Kat, Katja? With a super chat, thank you very much for the support there. Monkey DKS, one of our regulars and Patreon members. Thanks, Monkey DKS, for the super chat. Lewis also thinks SLS is a scam. Let's see. Oh, here you go. There's uh, Wyatt Fisher. The water runs to keep the temps down when firing. It's needed to perform the test. The water's just pumped in, so as long as there's no issue, as it runs. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I know the I know the water is necessary for the actual test. I guess I was just curious. Like, the water's been running for... It, it just runs and runs and runs and runs. So I wasn't... I'm not sure why... Wasn't sure why they just let it run, but maybe, maybe it's just easier. They just turn it on and let it go. Um... I'm pretty sure the pumps actually kick in a little, little more high gear as we actually get to the test event itself. That's what we saw the last time. Uh, but during this lead up here, they just kind of run the water suppression system. Tyler says, Tyler would be a fan if it was cheaper and development was faster. I, I can get behind that. I would love that. 
Uh, Michael Michael from Atlanta, it looks like. From ATL, question with all the power and thrust. How is it how is it so easy? How is it so easy to keep it from breaking free and lifting off? Well, that B2 that B2 test stand, which is what we're looking at here, which is at the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi, uh, that it's pretty beefy. I mean, that's designed as a rocket test stand, so that's that's exactly what it's designed to do. I mean, I don't necessarily say, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's easy, uh, but it's designed to bolt down and test rockets. Uh, so they, they bolt it down and clamp it there. Um, I don't know how the actual clamp system operates at the test stand, but uh, that's exactly what the stand... That's the only purpose of that stand, really. Heard they're stacking the Super Heavy Booster of Boca Chica right now. Uh, yes, they are. That's the, the BN1 is being stacked. Let's take a look. So while we're waiting here... We'll turn this up a little bit. We'll turn the NASA feed up. Turn the music down. While we're, while we're waiting, let's talk about what the SLS rocket is, because we've got the course. That's not... That is not the poll that I have on my events list that they're talking about right there. So the poll I have on my events list is the final Go No Go poll, which happens under one minute. All right, this music we're gonna we're gonna get a little more chill music. <laughs> I know you guys probably aren't paying attention to the music, but it's rocking in my ears, and it's a little too bumping today. Needed to be a little more chill. All right, so we turned down the NASA feed here while they're talking, and I want to talk about. Uh, we're gonna just take a look quick. Here's uh, another look at the B2 test stand. So this was uh, who was that that just asked? Uh, Michael that was asking about the B2 test stand here. You can kind of see the flame trench. You can see the core stage, which is back here. Uh, mounted behind there, but there's your flame trench. Uh, another look. We don't really get to see this look too much uh, from this this angle here. Uh, so this is this is going to be the core stage of the rocket here. So this is a... a, a uh, I, I want to say exploded view, but I got yelled at the last time I said exploded view for a rocket. You're not supposed to use the term exploded, but I, expanded view. That's what I'm looking for. This is an expanded view of the SLS rocket here. So uh, you can see the core stage, two boosters, four RS-25 engines at the bottom. We can only see two in this screenshot here. There will be an upper stage. Uh, so this, but we're not dealing with that. We're talking about just that first stage, the, the first orange section there with the four RS-25 engines at the bottom. That's what's mounted in the test stand, which we can see right there. So that's what we're waiting. They're going to test that. They're going to gimbal the engines. They'll move the engines all around uh, to make sure that they can move successfully. They kinda, they're kind of, they going to kind of simulate a flight profile with the engines. They're going to make the booster think that it's flying and run the engines and gimbal them around. Um, so... That's basically what the test is going to go through. It's going to make sure that it can run full duration. That's why it's eight minutes. Eight minutes is about what the full duration would be from the boosters. Fully fueled lift off all the way till cut off and separation would be about eight minutes for the Artemis 1 mission, which is scheduled for November 2021. Um, but that mission obviously is going to have some solid rocket boosters. Those are already being stacked in the vehicle assembly building down at the Kennedy Space Center. Um, you can see the two, if you could look real closely, right here is one booster on this side, and then here's the other booster over here. They are already being stacked, and uh, they may I think they're actually done being stacked for the most part. But they're just waiting on that core stage. So this is a, a second go here at this uh, test because it cut off early the last time. Gimbal full displacement, and then uh, once they get into the plus count, they will not do that, but they'll do some other things. Um, and then uh, after after that's complete, uh, they'll basically um, bring the uh, actuators into their null positions. Um, basically, they'll go ahead and make sure the engines are ready to, to go ahead and start. Um, they will then uh, transition the core stage to internal power. Uh, they, they do have, with the redundant inertial navigation unit, they've got the gyro compass alignment that they'll, that they'll finish up. And uh, that's when we get into the next uh, big sequence, which is the uh, go for the automated launch sequencer. And that'll start roughly at uh, 33 seconds. 
so that's that's uh, that's kind of the big steps that take place up to that point. And um, what's what what happens once we get into that ALS is that if you have to recycle, then that's a that's a big deal. It's probably not something we can recover from that easily on on day of. Um, but ahead of that, we can basically recycle back to the 10 minute mark, uh, and then it would take us probably an hour or two to get back into position where we could go through it again. But that that's uh, kind of how the day would look. Thank you. So it sounds like the majority of the calls are actually going to come in the last five minutes of the terminal count. Um, and, and so we're waiting to hear when we are ready for the, the poll for the go, no go into the terminal count. So we'll stand by for a little bit here and then we'll come back when we have uh, another update. All right. So still waiting. We still don't know the test time yet, although I do have my estimate here which would be about 14 minutes. Most of the activity, which she had just said, happens in about the last five minutes. So uh, it'll pick up really quickly if they are targeting 4.30 Eastern time. Uh, Manigard, hey, thanks for the super chat, Manigard. I like, <laughs> Manigard says, I don't play rocket favorites, light the flamey end of anything and I'll show up. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want to say, uh, I mean, I'm going to fan, if the SLS succeeds, great. I'm, I don't like this whole the whole like tribal the tribalism that goes on in the space industry where we have to pick SpaceX or SLS, you know, Starship versus SLS, even though it's in my intro that I ask you about Starship versus SLS. I mean, I think a little healthy competition is okay, but I don't want to see any of them fail. So, uh, yeah, having the uh, having the SLS be successful today, I think is going to be good for good for everybody. So hopefully we get a, a full duration test today. All right, let's grab a couple other comments. Do I think that asteroid mining is plausible? Says Lewis. Uh, I I think it could be. I don't know what the I don't know what the market value is for asteroid mining, but couldn't see. I wouldn't see why not. I would love to see more commercialization of space to make it a regular event to go to space and back, and not uh, such a uh, you know kind of a a big deal that we have to only launch one SLS every three years or something like that. Like, I would love to see this be regular, like the Falcon 9 is, is trying to do and Starship is trying to do. Why is the SLS so beefy compared to Starship? So the SLS is designed to go beyond Earth orbit uh, with a single launch. Uh, the Starship, it, and none of it is reusable. It's a, it's a bit of a it's, it's a bit of a criticism for the SLS is none of it is reusable, um, but Starship has a different goal. Starship is trying to be fully reusable, and if it was going to go to like Mars or something like that, it's likely going to need on orbit refueling, so it wouldn't be able to go to Mars in just a single launch. I think the SLS is intended to take people to the moon or to potentially to Mars with a single launch super powerful rocket what happens to the boosters are they just trashed yeah pretty much everything is just trashed Uh, can the core land like the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy and Starship? Nope, no landing for the core stage at all. So we should hopefully, I'm kind of listening in, I'm, I'm hoping they come up with they give us an idea on the launch time. We're still thinking that they're targeting 4.30, which is in like 10 minutes from now. It's 4.30 Eastern time, my time. That'd be 3.30 their time, Central time, where they're, where they're located. Is at the Stennis Space, Space Center. But we still don't know the time. I did see, I wanted to acknowledge David, David 
David Boone, I should I should learn how to say your last name, David. I see you every single time, but thanks for the face. David, David B from New Jersey. Bune, Boone, sent over uh, 400 Facebook stars. Thanks very much, David. Appreciate the support. I think he's one of, he's, David's one of our supporters, too. And I saw D Dale Sheehy became a member. Thanks, Dale. Appreciate that. Thanks for joining in. Yeah, so this is Stennis Space Center. This is in Mississippi. Here, we can pull up a map while we're waiting for a launch time. And I'll show you. I'll show you exactly where it is. Let's full screen it here. So here's Stennis Space Center. The B-2 test stand. So this whole thing is the Stennis... The John C. Stennis Space Center here in Mississippi. Big campus here. But the test stand is way over here. Uh, so here's the test stand we're looking at. It's got this big water reservoir right here. Uh, but here's the test stand. Most of the views we're going to get are going to be from over here. You see they kind of got this uh, whole path cut right here. Most of the views are going to be from over here in this like parking lot area, I believe. I think this is where the press is over here as well. They're not very far away. It's only like, what's the distance here from there to there? It's only uh, one mile away. It's just over a mile away. So that's where that's where the press is watching from is just over a mile away. But because it's not lifting off, we talk about this in the Starship, the danger cone, like the higher you lift off, the wider your danger cone spreads. This is staying right on the ground. So danger cone, not that big. I'm still a little bit surprised that they're only <laughs> that they're only a mile away, but uh, they have to wear earplugs and things like that because that's. That's uh, that's going to be very loud for them, but that's where the test stand is right there. And then if we zoom out, so there's the Stennis Space Center. You zoom out, give you kind of an idea on where where in the United States we are. Down here, Mississippi. All the way down at the south end of Mississippi. So Mississippi, Mississippi uh, kind of has this little, uh, this little tail here at the bottom. It's all the way here down at the bottom, right up against... Uh, right up against the river here. So you can actually get... Here's the river. You can actually get in here, I believe, with with equipment. But that's where we're launching from. Not launching. Testing from. I gotta keep saying launch. I, I can't help it. I'm gonna say it a million times, probably. Uh, let's see. All right. So, yeah, no no word yet. We're expecting the test in seven minutes. Which will be interesting. I'm expecting them to give us, like, they should give us marks during the countdown where they'll say, like, you know, T minus five minutes on my mark. And then they'll wait and they'll say mark. And that'll help me adjust my countdown clock. To match whatever theirs is but they're still saying the confusing bit is they're still saying standing by for hot fire test i don't know seems like we should know by now if they're gonna go in six and a half minutes i feel like we should know nasa tweeted that they are just a bit ahead of polling Let's see, is there an update on the Twitter machine? Oh, they're coming. For the back. Artemis 1 launch, there will be a built in hold before the go no go pull to go into the terminal count with the last 10 minutes of the countdown. This isn't quite the same, but it is similar. The team takes a look at the data from the vehicle and the facility and ensures that everything looks good before proceeding into the terminal count. So we're just a little more than 10 minutes away from our T0 time now to fire up the engines. And uh, when those engines fire up, the team is looking to get at least four minutes of data to support the test objectives needed to confirm that SLS is ready to launch Artemis missions. From there, they will continue to let the engines fire and to burn through all of the fuel in the tanks and possibly pick up additional data for some secondary test objectives. Uh, during launch and ascent for Artemis missions, we expect the engines to fire for about eight minutes to drain the tanks of the propellant before what is uh, called the main engine cutoff, or MECO. So, uh, Bill, tell us a little bit about what we can expect after hot fire starts. 
Okay, so uh, the other oh, thing I'd say is I'm also spot. listening in. So if we, if we get to the point where they're going to call for the poll, I'll just tell you to pick it up at that point. But so where I left off was with ALS start. So that's roughly 30 seconds before they actually start. We would then bring on the hydrogen burn off igniters, uh, which are basically a series of flares that are built into the stand to pick up any re residual hydrogen and, and basically dissipate all that. Uh, they'll finish with the uh, renew. Uh, redundant inertia alignment navigation mode um, and then basically they go into at roughly six minutes they'll, they'll do the rs25 starts and those uh, they bring up one at a time and uh, roughly at, at uh, five six seconds they'll start that at five six, one second they'll be up and running at 100 percent and uh, with that I think we're getting ready to uh, hear them go for the poll. But um, as the, as they uh, basically get through that part of it, we'll hear the uh, uh, basically the, the the engines will come up to 109 percent thrust level, and then uh, we'll go into the first poll at, at uh, the gimbal profile. So. I think what we should do at this point is switch over, if we can, to pick that part of it up. All right, let's listen in to the, the poll. Sounds like we're getting uh, some polling, maybe, to enter the 10-minute count. As the sea puncher steps through there. Reminder to everybody, uh, we, after we get past 557 and after we terminate LH2 uh, system securing, we only have 2 minutes, 35 seconds of full time before we have to recycle pack. Also, another reminder to everybody, when we do the switch to internal power, we will get the Christmas tree effect on the uh, uh, avionics screen. So that is um, normal. That is to be uh, expected. So just to uh, remind everybody that we will get that Christmas tree effect once we go into internal power. The so Christmas tree effect sounds like all their caution and warnings right. would light up. Right, sequencer on your... Uh, <laughs> On your command, let's go ahead and initiate the terminal count sequencer for sub-step uh, alpha and record the UCT, UTC time, please. Copy. That sounds good. Sounds like they're gonna they're gonna push ahead. I think our countdown clock might be. T count has resumed. And give us a UTC real quick, please. Uh, twenty twenty seven twelve. Twenty twenty seven twelve. Copy. Seven seven twenty twenty seven twelve. Do you copy? 2027-12? Is that current time? So the Christmas tree effect, I see somebody, some people talking about the Christmas tree effect. It's basically when they switch to internal power, it sounds like it's gonna, it'll, it will light up all their caution and warning systems. A lot of times they call that the Christmas tree because it looks like all of a sudden all the lights turned on. Um, but I think that's what they're talking about with the Christmas tree effect is when they switch to internal power, all their cautions and warnings will light up and they're expecting that, but they were just reminding all their controllers that, hey, when we switch to internal power, all the caution and warnings are going to come on. Oh, five minutes. Oh, oh, we're. Oh, we're. Wait, wait, wait a minute. All right. It sounds like we actually missed the poll, so. We are in the terminal count sequence now, and we are standing by and listening as they progress through their steps. Oh, so we're we're earlier than that. We're we're down to like like this area. Hold on, this is gonna be a struggle to try to. All right, now now we gotta now we gotta get the clock synced up. See if I can get them synced. T minus eight minutes. Oh, that's T minus eight minutes? I thought he's okay. Hold on. So I was right. We're like this. Peace. I'm bouncing all over the place with the clock. Somebody get it right. Alright, so he said T minus eight minutes. I thought he said T minus five minutes, like like 30 seconds ago. So it looks like we're about seven and a half minutes away. We'll find out in 30 seconds how, how accurate my clock is. 
I think it's pretty close. I was right the first time. I shouldn't have changed it. So it sounds like they're going for... 4.37 p.m. Eastern Time. Should be 20.37 UTC. Which is what I thought I heard them say. Here we go. T-minus seven minutes. Oh, right on the money. Oh, that's yeah. Here we go. Now we've got it. Now we've got it. All right. So now, now we know we're, we're in it here. We're into the terminal counts. Under seven minutes now. Now, not a lot of ac not not a lot of events in our timeline over there. The next okay, big we're about six and a half minutes away from hot fire right now. There you go. You can see that path that's cut through that we were just talking about a minute ago from the press site straight to the test stand. A lot of there were like deer that were in that area at the last test, which was kind of funny because all of a sudden like the engines lit up and the deer were like, hmm, what's going on over there? <laughs> and T minus six minutes starting LH2 securing. All right, here we go. Just a few minutes away now, so we only made it to we made it to 67 seconds. Now remember, the engines are going to ignite at about T minus six seconds, so they actually ignite early. The engines will ignite six seconds prior to when we hit zero, so they ignite early. That it's pretty much the same idea as the space shuttle. The space shuttle ignited at six seconds. It did the little space shuttle twang where it actually kind of leaned forward and then came back at zero, and then they launched. They'll do the same thing here, except we shouldn't get the twang uh, when we actually see a launch. This is just to get the engines uh, the engines up to full thrust, and then the test starts officially at at T0. Then it has to run, has to run until uh, eight minutes is the idea. If it T minus five minutes initiating TVC spin start. There we go. We are right, right on the money. I'll get a lot of this stuff out of the way. Probably get that stuff out of the way to start with. Maybe I'll put myself over here since the test stands over there. Uh, so, yeah, so, so at this point, uh, they've basically initiated uh, Capu start, uh, and and basically those will be coming up on helium. They'll go into a uh, what we call the wiggle test, which is where they'll gimbal the engines. Um, and then, so, so that's uh, basically coming up here in um, just a couple of minutes. Uh, on the on the plus side of of, of that, uh, you know, once we get into the engine starts, um, the T minus four minutes, Capu start starting LO two securing. Okay, so LO two is being secured now, so that they're getting they're uh, really moving forward in the plus count here. Um, still roughly at uh, T minus. Seeing all the water suppression system. And so uh, with that, we should be seeing the um, TVC gimbal profile here in about uh, half a minute or so. Basically at this point, they've got uh, the water system all turned on. So you might be able to see that in some of the views. And uh, that'll basically take care of uh, not only the heat coming off of the engines, but also dampen uh, the tremendous amount of noise that'll be coming off. So the, that those capu As capu I capu earlier, the hydrogen burn off igniters uh, will come on at, at about uh, 12 seconds. Uh, T minus three minutes starting PSN four. The uh, inertial navigation mode uh, will, will be complete at about 10 uh, T minus 10 seconds. And then um, basically the enable command for ALS at 9.2 seconds. And then we go into engine start at roughly at 6 seconds. Those uh, take about 5 seconds to come up to full operating uh, pressures. And uh, basically at that point, the stage controller will be go for launch or go for test in this case at 2 seconds. And um, 
basically we go forward into our profile for the day. All right, we're, we're coming up on two There's minutes. There's a gimbal test taking place now. So we got the gimbal gimbal testing taking place right now. They're gonna, it's basically like the wiggle test. They're gonna move the engines around, make sure they can move freely, obeying all the commands. Two minutes away here now. We're gonna have two minutes, two minutes. the first major event after ignition. So the call was they just announced at T minus two minutes, uh, which is basically they have finished uh, the gimbal test with the actuators and they're bringing them back into the null position. Uh, and then basically at this point they basically are getting ready for powering up the engines So the first major thing that happens after ignition then, is going to be uh, at one minute transitions to internal power at Roughly a minute and 30 seconds out. T minus one thirty switch to internal power And then uh, there you go. internal the power that's where the Christmas tree lights would come on at roughly a minute and then we'll have to go for uh, ALS and we'll clear that pull of short. At T minus 33 seconds. Here we go, we're coming down to the final pull. T minus one minute, following personnel report, go, no, go for ALS, AEA, TEA, AGA, REA, NEA, NTC. Vehicle and speed two systems are go for ALS. Here we go. Basically, the water system has come on full bore. Come on, baby. Go for the full eight minutes. Or at least for four minutes. That's what we need. The official start of ALS. Next up is the hydrogen burn-off igniters come on at uh, 12 seconds before T0. Here we go. Brophy Rof ignition. Go Sparklers. Start. H boys are Here we go. Engine starts. Has been okay. Fire them up. And all personnel, we've got engine start and we're into the plus count. All personnel, please continue to monitor your system and grab is in control. Here we go, and we're off. Giddy up. That's where we had to cut off last time, so we've already made it further than last time. That's good news. Well, there you go. Gimbal profiles. Look at that. Look at them. Look at them go. Holy. That's a lot of wiggle. He said we have a fire. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, oh. She burned it. Something's burning. We've got fire! Keep going. What is this? I don't know what this is. We've got another gimbal event coming up here. Okay, uh, 
turn to the front seat of the bus. So much power! So much power! I'm not super concerned about the fire. There is heat protection there. But it does look alarming, but... Keep going. We're almost to the four minute mark. Four minute is what we need to move on to launch. Keep going. We're almost there. to four minutes. That's it right there. There's the data milestone. That's what they needed. They needed to hit that milestone to have enough data to proceed. And she's still going. If she puts uh, 4 minutes 30 seconds, I should have been the front profile. Top item 16. All that smoke we're seeing, it's not actually smoke, it's its steam. Water suppression system there being instantly vaporized. She's still going. Yeah, keep it going. Let's go full duration. Full duration is eight minutes. There's a final gimbal that happens at 7.30. We're just over five and a half minutes in the plus count. I think you can see, you can kind of see a mock diamond in that engine in the back left there. That little blue bit there. About six minutes. Look at that tower of, tower of steam. And it looks like it's raining too. control but they said something about a violation. We're coming up on seven minutes of the plus one. Something about a violation but they're but they're continuing.
almost there. So at this point, it's it's. This is the final gimbal. It's almost out of propellant. So this final gimbal is to make sure that the engines will still move under under almost no propellant. There you go. You can see them him wiggling all over the place. Kind of weird the way that looks, but it's not what I was picturing. There it is. We should be a cutoff here. We're, we're still going. All right, so we're just over eight minutes into the plus count. Personnel that's coming up hopefully on a lot of completion here, and we have a cutoff. Oh, 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 shut down. Shut down. All right. REA, I can hear REA on channel 16. Yeah, full duration. Uh, REA, on channel, REA on channel 16, Verb. Safe engine shutdown, please. Safe engine shutdown. And you're in shutdown standby, correct? Correct. Okay, all personnel, that takes us to page. 656, all personnel go to page 656 to start the post hot fire shutdown securing operations. All right. Oh, that was sweet. Yeah, personnel on page Bill, as you said earlier, as we talked about earlier, the team was hoping to get at least four minutes of data. And we. They're talking about something in the background. All right, they are proceeding with the their shutdown procedures now. As we said earlier, the team was hoping to get at least four minutes of data, and they did get more than ten than eight minutes. Excuse me. So they should have gotten what they need. The team will obviously need to look at that data, but based on what we've seen, uh, Bill, tell us more about what, you, what it looked like to you. Yeah, so they uh, cl clearly got the uh, full duration that they were after, which is really great news. And I think you heard the applause. They had, you know, the command to shut down, which is exactly what they were looking for. They had no TCC violations, uh, test commit criteria violations that would have uh, prompted an early shutdown. So that was really good news. Um, you know, clearly there's a lot of data that now that's going to have to be analyzed. The engineers got to see uh, what worked and what didn't or what needs to be tweaked and what doesn't. But uh, that said, I think uh, the applause says a lot about uh, how the team feels, uh, you know, that they got through the test and it looks pretty good right now. Yeah, so um, there, there was some, uh, you know, observed uh, burning on the aft end. Uh, one of the things that yeah, Boeing the had done uh, pro after the last test was to apply uh, a lot of extra cork to the aft end because we aren't, we aren't going to get... We didn't, unfortunately, with this test, right, we're not flying through uh, the thin air as, you, as we ascend. And so we knew we were going to have more of that, and that was one of the reasons why they added that. They also put a tape covering over the top of that. Uh, we knew that, uh, you know, if the tape gets hot enough, that adhesive layer below the tape surface is going to start burning. And so we clearly saw a lot of that, uh, but there was nothing that prompted uh, to shut down early, which was, which was really good news. Great. Thank you, Bill. I think that's all the updates that we'll have for you here as the team proceeds through their shutdown procedures. So we'll turn it back over to Lee. All right. Well, well they're going to turn it over to Lee. I'm going to I'm going to talk for a little bit. That was pretty that was pretty awesome, huh? We got a full duration test. You can see oh, they're showing us the uh, the booster stacking here now, the solid rocket boosters. While we watch the solid rocket boosters, I guess I'll chat a little bit. We can get rid of the events list here now. Maybe I'll maybe I'll go to this mode. But there we go. So a couple I saw a couple of people asking about the uh, the mock diamonds or the shock diamonds uh, that were. It looked like we saw one of them on one of the engines. There we'll take a look look back. A couple a couple of people kept calling them blue tornadoes. Uh, that I, this is this is getting a little bit past my expertise on exactly how they form. But mock diamonds or shock diamonds form. Uh, in supersonic exhaust flow uh, and it's basically uh, the my understanding is it's basically it happens at really low altitudes when the exhaust it is over expanded meaning it comes out of the nozzle and expands too far and the the air pressure is then pinching it back in and you're getting basically vortices and 
differences in pressure and density in the flow of the exhaust. That's my like very basic understanding of like how shock diamonds form. Somebody could probably explain that much better than I do. But basically, it's a it's something that you see in supersonic exhaust, uh, usually at low altitudes. And it's cool looking. Sometimes you can see a whole bunch of them if you can see the entire exhaust line. You you can see it in you, you can see it in a lot of rocket tests, you, uh, engine tests that are at ground level. You can see it on uh, even like jet airplanes uh, will occasionally produce a, a mock diamond. So there you go. Stand, as Framrick says, standing wave patterns in supersonic exhaust plumes. That's a much. I like that explanation better. Much simpler. Uh, let's see. Go back to uh, a couple other... Uh, we missed a whole bunch of chat during that time, but... Make sure to stay live for an additional eight minutes just in case. Yeah. Oh, here you go. So they're doing a replay for us. Yeah, so this was this is good. Next stop, Kennedy Space Center. Hopefully. There you go. You can see the mock dime in there, right above my head. They look like mini tornadoes. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Will they test every SLS core? I, I don't know that for sure, but I believe the answer is yes. I believe they're going to test every SLS core. This view right here, just watching the engines just... <laughs> so, that, I mean, when they told... When they said they were going to do a gimbal test, like, this is not what I was picturing. This is cool. This is not what I pictured that it would look like, though. You can see a little bit of, a little bit of flaminess bits that are on fire remember there are there is thermal protection there um so the fact that it's on fire is not a huge deal and when it's actually flying you're gonna have less of that because right you know you get hydrogen that could potentially collect remember hyd this is using this is a hydrolox engine meaning it's using liquid oxygen and hydrogen as its propellants hydrogen rises in our atmosphere naturally so you can get hydrogen that collects underneath the rocket that's what the ropey sparklers are for is to try to burn that off so it doesn't collect but if it does collect and it ignites especially if you have a you know if you got a small leak or you got a little bit of unburned hydrogen somewhere uh, then it then it'll catch on fire but it has all that thermal protection underneath it so it wasn't a huge concern to me and while it's flying you're gonna have you're gonna have less of that especially as you get higher in the atmosphere and the the available oxygen is going to be less for a fire like that to burn. So uh, that's not a huge, it's not a huge concern for me, but it was, a, it was a concern for the test a little bit, because obviously you don't want, you don't want it to damage any of the test equipment. I wasn't so much concerned about the rocket as I was more of the equipment around the rocket. Why are they using SLS and not other rockets like Falcon? Well, the Falcon 9 is not nearly powerful enough for what they want to do with the SLS. Uh, so Falcon 9 will deliver satellites to uh, to low Earth orbit. And, uh, you know, Falcon Heavy has a, has a certain payload capacity. That was also when they started SLS. Falcon Heavy wasn't a thing yet. I mean, SLS, remember, SLS has been around for a long time. They've been working. It's kind of the, it's kind of uh, the part most people hate about SLS, is because it's been around for a long time and it hasn't flown yet. But this is one of the last tests here where we get we're pushing on towards a flight in November of this year, November, just a few months away. 
That's the target. Now, we don't know. That was the target if this test was completed in January. They said they were going to retest here in March, but they did not. They said that they specifically said that the target was still November, even though they had to do this test over again. Look, you can kind of see it's raining here from the, the, the steam clouds there generated. Get a little bit of rain coming back as it condenses. There's your shock diamond again, mock diamond. Yeah, SLS, how long has SLS been going? The SLS, I mean, I know it's kind of had a couple of uh, variations since then. Originally, we were like the Constellation program. And uh, let's see, Af after that was canceled, then we kind of went to the SLS program, but the SLS program, uh, when did that, well, when was that authorized? That was authorized by NASA in 2010, it was the SLS program. But it's kind of, a, it's a little bit of an extension of the Constellation program, kind of, but the Constellation program was a little bit different because they you had like the Ares-1 prototype was a, was a, just a solid, basically a solid rocket a solid rocket booster to orbit <laughs> um, but the constellation program started in like 2005 got canceled in 2010 and that's where sls picked up so sls been going for 11 years now 10 years 11 years framework says sls is 2011 yeah i guess it got authorized when did it, it got authorized in 2010 But yeah, it's, in 2013, they said this this would be the the most capable super heavy lift launch vehicle of all times, lifting more than 50, 50 tons. Super. Oh no, that's just a the definition of. I was gonna say 50 tons is not. It can go there. It can go up more than that. Uh, block one variant, 70 tons to low Earth orbit. We're coming up on seven minutes of the plus one. Block. Two, oh, let's see, block one is, these are to tra translunar injection. Block one is 27,000 kilograms. Block one B, 38,000 kilograms. Block two is around 45,000 kilograms. That's to trans, that's to translunar injection, TLI. Oh, yeah, here we go. Low to low Earth orbit, 95 tons for Block One, 105 tons for Block One B, and 130 tons for Block Two. That's to low Earth orbit. And st I think Starship is aiming for 100 tons to low Earth orbit, right? So we still have potential. If if SLS ever makes it to Block Two, it would it would be more capable. But Starship is uh, obviously fully reusable, which is a big benefit. But we don't have to, we, it doesn't have to be either or. We don't have to have one or the other. Like we can have Starship and SLS as long as they're they're serving certain purposes. All right, REA, can you ver REA on channel 16? There we go, so there's the cutoff again. So there's our replay. I guess, I think at this point here, I mean, now we're uh, 22 minutes past the actual launch itself, and it uh, looks like they're going to end their broadcast. I think this is the point where I pretty much will, will wrap up as well. Unless anybody has any final parting questions, but...
not just reusable, refuelable in orbit. The farther you go, the less your payload is with SLS. With Starship, you just need more refueling flights. Yeah, I mean, Starship is de would definitely be, has the potential to be more versatile, for sure. But we still gotta see, I mean, there's still, that's still very much in development where SLS is, I mean, SLS has still got long gaps between actual launches, but potentially this could launch in November like on an actual full-on Artemis 1 mission. Hopefully it doesn't get pushed off. I'm kind of skeptical that it'll actually make the November launch time. I have a feeling it's going to go to 2022, but right now they're targeting November. We'll see. So next up, uh, the next thing that we have here is going to be uh, probably uh, SpaceX's Starship SN11, which we'll be, we'll be back for. Uh, we don't know when that is. Uh, there are... There are uh, TFRs, temporary flight restrictions, up for tomorrow through Sunday. So maybe a weekend flight, but we haven't seen a static fire yet. And there were no road closures the last time I checked. So seemed improbable, but I'm thinking more like early next week that we might see Starship SN11 fly. We'll see. But that'll be, uh, that's probably the next thing that we're going to be live for here. And, uh... If you want to chat in between, consider joining our Discord. Thank you to all our Patreon members and YouTube channel members and anybody that, that jumped in and, and super chatted today. Appreciate all your support. I saw Helmet and Neko added in a, a super chat there towards the end. Thank you very much, you guys, for the support. Uh, but we'll be back again for another for another uh, a launch. This was not a launch today. This was just a test, but we'll be back. Thanks for joining us today. This was fun. Glad the orange rocket went full duration. Hopefully on to its launch, November 2021. You tell me in the comments as we're watching the outro whether you think November 2021 is actually going to happen. You let me know. As the, as the outro's rolling, I'm going to read them. You tell me. Are we going to make 20, November 2021 or you think it's going to be later than that? Let me know. All right, that's it, guys. My name's Tori. This is Overlook Horizon, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.